So problem two on the midterm um, said that we had a potential from a charged disk and the potential was given as V is equal to sigma over two epsilon naught. And then we had the square root of Z squared plus R squared minus Z. Where Z is the position that we are on the Z axis and R would be the radius of the disk. And we want to find the potential where Z is much, much greater than R. So whenever I see Z much, much greater than R or some sort of comparison like this kind of um, situation, I always try to think of expansions. So we always want to think of how can we um, change our potential into a form where we can expand it to simplify and, and find a more functional form. So we want to do that first with the square root here, where we try to essentially factor out a Z. So we have the square root of Z squared, and we have 1 plus R squared over Z squared inside of that square root minus Z. And again, this is just me factoring out a Z squared from each of the terms within the square root. I can then pull that outside of the square root. And remember the square root of Z squared is just Z. So then we have Z times the square root of one plus R squared over Z squared minus Z. Now there's a Z for, um, in both terms inside the brackets here, so we can factor that out. And we have sigma times Z over two epsilon naught is the square root of one plus R squared over Z squared minus one. And now this is the term that we want to work with because we can see that in the square root here we have a setup kind of like a one plus epsilon, <coughs> which is the binomial expansion tells us that this has the value of one plus one half times epsilon. This is just a um, kind of identity that you want to try to remember. It's the binomial expansion of some term where this term epsilon is very, very small. So because Z is much, much greater than R, this term inside the square root here will become very small, almost negligible, and we can expand out the square root like this. So we continue and we have that V is now sigma times Z over two epsilon naught. And we bring up what we have inside here. So we have one plus uh, one half r squared over z squared minus 1, where again this expansion here came from the expansion of the square root where we have 1 plus 1 half times our epsilon term, where epsilon in this case was r squared over z squared. So we can see that the 1 and the 1 will cancel, and we end up with sigma z over 2 epsilon naught times 1 half r squared over z squared. If we cancel a z and we multiply top and bottom by pi we end up with sigma times pi r squared over two, sorry, over four epsilon naught times pi. And the reason I multiplied the top and the bottom by pi was because this term on the top now looks very much like the total charge on our, our charged uh, disk, where we have, again, the sigma is our charge density over the entire area, and the area of that disk is pi r squared. So we get our final potential is now Q total over four pi epsilon naught, and sorry, I forgot to bring this z down here. So four pi epsilon naught z. So this is our potential that we find um, where z is much, much greater than r. And what's interesting about this is that it looks exactly the same as the potential of a single point charge um, at the origin when you're really far away. So essentially what we have see by looking at this charged disk from a very far distance away is that it looks and acts like a point charge. So even though it's a charged disk and when we're very, very far away, it acts as if it's a point charge and the potential falls off as if it were a point charge. So the final potential for the charged disk for Z is much, much greater than R. It's just Q total, which is sigma pi R squared over four pi epsilon naught times Z.